Among the popular front-end development frameworks, React is the only one that is actually not written natively within TypeScript. However, every single React job out there seems to demand TypeScript, so in this lesson, we will look at 5 neat tips that you can use when using TypeScript plus React, so let's go. Pretty much every beginner tutorial for React developers needs to start with create React app and you can create a new React app using this command npx create React app passing in the name of your application. For example, in our case, it is quick app. What you might not know is that you can pass in additional flags that is minus minus template and use TypeScript. And this will generate a React application that actually uses TypeScript out of the box. And you can see that if you run this application by running npm start, it tells you that we can edit source slash app.dsx, which is a TypeScript file, in order to modify this page. Now, of course, you can take props as an argument to your function component. For example, you can take a prop that has a property called message of type string. Now with TypeScript, you can actually create a type that annotates exactly what your props are going to be. So we can create this type called app props with message string and annotate our function argument with this particular type. With this props annotation in place, anytime anyone tries to use our app component, they will be forced to provide the message property of type string, ensuring much greater maintainability of our React function components. Right after props, the next key concept within React is state. Now with function components, we can create state by using react.useState. For example, here we are creating a state to store a user with properties name and age. And you can see that this type is inferred when we hover over the user variable return from use state. Now sometimes you might not have access to an initial value that you want to use with your state, in which case you can use a placeholder for example now. However, this breaks the type inference because in this case TypeScript is inferring the user to be of type null. Now just like we created a type to declare what our props are going to be, we can create a type that declares what the user type is going to be and here we have a type user with property name of string and age of type number. Now use state actually takes a generic argument allowing you to annotate what type it should actually store. In our case we want to store either a user or an initial null so we annotate that and now user is perfectly typed to be exactly what we want. Now in addition to use state, generic arguments are actually used by a number of hooks within React. Another key example is useRef which is commonly used to store a reference to DOM elements. For example, here we are storing a reference to a div. Now it can be tricky to figure out exactly which type you should use for the generic argument to use ref. So here we've just used a placeholder as any. And then when you actually use the ref, you can hover over it and see what it expects it to be. Here we can see that it expects it to be HTML div element. Once we know that, we can replace our any with this particular type. And now if we ever try to access the current value off of this ref, it'll either be the initial null or an HTML div element. Now we can use this trick of hovering over something to figure out what it should be and then using that as an explicit annotation with a number of things within the React TypeScript ecosystem. Another example are form event handlers. For example, here we have an onChange function which is designed to handle the onChange event of an input element. However, the exact type annotation for the event is a bit tricky to figure out so we can start off with just an any annotation. Here we have an input element that demonstrates us using this particular function. Now of course we could hover over this onChange attribute and use that to figure out what our event annotation should be but here's another neat trick. We can actually take this function and move it completely in line and now remove our explicit any annotation and let TypeScript figure that out based on this application to the onChange attribute. Now because we are assigning this function to onChange, TypeScript infers that E must be of the type that onChange expects. So it's inverted to be of type react.change event for HTML input element. Armed with this knowledge, we could create a function with this explicit annotation. But here's another neat trick. When you have this function inline, you can actually select all of it and use the option to extract it into a local scope. And then this function gets inserted for us with all the annotations in place and we don't need to do anything else. And there are your 5 tips. But since you've watched this long, here's a bonus tip for the diehard fans. Now this one is an oldie but a goodie. If you are creating a new React application right now, you will most likely not use any class components. But in case you are, they are still completely supported by TypeScript. Now the first thing that we learned with function components was how to add props. And you can do the same with class components as well. 
Here we have a type called app props with message of type strings which we want to use for app. React.component actually takes two generic arguments. The first one is the props. So we can use our app props to annotate that the app component expects always a message of type string to be passed in. And then internally within the class, we can use it off of this.props. And the next thing that we looked at was state. And you can use state with React class components as well. Here we have a type declaring our app state to be something that has an optional member called count of type number. Now the react.component class takes the state as a second generic argument after props. Once we add that, we can access the count off of this.state. As an additional note, if you want to provide an initial value to the state, you can create it as a property on the app class. Here we've created state of type app state and initialized it with count value zero. And that's all for this lesson. Leave a comment below with your favorite React plus TypeScript tip. And if you enjoyed this lesson, then smash that like and leave a subscribe and I will see you in the next one.